Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Love at First Laugh. I am so excited today because I have an amazing guest. Uh, his new special set list on Amazon is a must watch. It's brilliant and hilarious. If you've seen him on I'm Dying Up Here on Showtime and a million other shows, please welcome actor, comedian, improviser, Rick Overton. Hi, Rick. Grace. Hi. Thanks for having me <laughs> on the show. This time it's fine. We had a little fail in the beginning. All just, right. Okay, good. Yes, we're on. We're live. We're on. Yes, I just couldn't click the second time. Whatever. It's just... <laughs> uh, second time's a charm. It, it is. Yes, yes. Actually, it's isn't it third time's a charm? I'm just bending it to make the situation work. I'm improvising here. Okay, because I can like cancel this one and we can go back up. <laughs> we'll, we'll live up to the, to the saying. Uh, no, I just say let it roll naturally. Yeah, naturally. Well, you are the original improviser. You are amazing. Oh my God, I watched set list and I was blown away. It is so. I don't know how you do it. If you can explain to people what set list is about, then all right. Here's the like idea. That. I'll tell you. You're up there and you're all alone. And, you know, it's like whose line? There's a few of you up there, and they throw a suggestion. This is the just you version. You're just up there alone, and there's a projection screen behind you, and they throw suggestions that are not like normal words. They're blended words, weird suggestions, sometimes elaborately long suggestions, and you have to go cold like it's a set list, but you didn't write this set list out. They came up with it and didn't show you, and they hit you when you're cold facing the audience with those suggestions. And so what I try to do is to roll with it like it's always been in my act and I'm just naturally trying to, you know, it's it's what I always say every night. Yes. Uh, and, and, I, and in my brain, I got the little hamster just burning that wheel up trying to, you know, look for things. And uh, But you can't show that part. Don't show that part. That <laughs> You know, and sometimes you can't help it. You're like, oh, you'll see a few times in the special. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Because I'm really very definitively, I set up, I make such a hard setup that sometimes it has nothing to do with what the suggestion is at all. And I have to justify it somehow. But there's another part of my brain that has like a daredevil, let's see what happens element, you know. And I think that's what improv has and needs. Yeah. It needs to have a little bit of the daredevil, don't you think? When you're oh, riffing, yeah. any riff with a crowd, it's kind of like a daredevil. Yes, it is. Do you do you yeah. go like do stuff like skydiving or like go on a on, on a bridge that i don't know it's like really <laughs> bungee no I, I, I was motorcycling like for years. i did biking motorcycling for years and uh, okay i've flown biplanes Ooh. you know second seat on you know where you stunt and you can turn upside down and do maneuvers and that's yeah i like that uh and so going fast i liked that yeah, not so much exactly. anymore. Not at these prices. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, cure yeah. yourself of that one. You uh, love to live life on the edge. I did. And now, you know, a little slowing down. But uh, so how about a comedy version of that, right? There you, you go. You don't need all don't need all the gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of uh, comedy dynamics and you're clicking yeah. it. You're clicking, there's my name. There I am. All right. There's me on stage. Uh, this is me from the special. We need to redefine what America is. I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for cir to circumcision. Because I, uh, my dream was always to be in the circus. You painted yourself into a corner there a little bit. I walked myself into a much deeper ditch. Right. Oh, yes. I like doing that with set list. I think a lot of us have had a reawakening, a renaissance, a rebirth of a new energy in us to start getting things done. Finally fixing some things. And the first thing we gotta fix is <laughs> The strength of marijuana here in California. Yay. Yeah, I know. It's just, it makes me nervous just like when you. Yeah, I get, I get a little nervous watching it too. As I walk myself <laughs> I right off the edge of that diving board into the empty pool all the time, you know. That is insane. Um, yeah. I, 
so what happens, you know, because you're talking and all of a sudden you just turn around and have to tie what you're saying to what you see. So oh, yeah. what goes through your mind? Because you're like incredibly fast. I would be like, oh, my God, crying. It, you know, it almost can't go through your mind. It has to go through your gut. It has oh, to go through nice. your instincts. Your mind will hang it up with spelling corrections and word. Or is this the right way? It'll worry. It'll shut the joke down, right? Yeah. Like all the times you've just super saved yourself. You don't even know how you did it on stage. You're trying to remember what you said later. It should be in set list. It should be an entire show of you have to try and remember later because you have no idea at the time how you got there. Because by the yeah. time you have an idea of how you got there, you're becoming the observer rather than the participant. Mm. And then that's like watching an overhead movie of you driving a Porsche on Mulholland while you are driving the Porsche on Mulholland. You don't have a forward view. You just see the drone shot. You're going to yeah. go off into someone's swimming pool, you know? Yeah. You'll yeah, never, you'll cool. never make that next curve. There's just no way. So... I think improv has to stay in its like a uh, spontaneity zone. A spontaneity zone can't, you can't think it out as much. It gets not spontaneous there. Exactly. And there's just something super fast and smart in spontaneity. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Do you have any like pre-show rituals to get yourself in that space or you just go out there and just dive into it? I just try to go. You know, I mean, you, uh, ah, I'll tell you one thing, practical. Don't eat a big meal. Right. Because it's low to the brain, right? Is, yeah, blood has only so much blood and it has to choose yeah. its battles. Don't exactly. make it choose. Go light <laughs> before a show. Yeah, definitely. How many times have you eaten that big pasta thing and then you're on stage and everything? <laughs> oh, no, I ate too much. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not quick brain. Uh, I, a protein shake, something like that, you know, energy thing. Yes. It's healthy and light. Then afterwards, yes. you celebrate. Yay. After the show, you can go to the dining room. Then you can pick out, yeah, and eat yeah, whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the time. What do you do after a show? Like, what did you do after that show? Did you hang out with like the director or the producer? Oh, I just hung out with the crowd. With the crowd, thanked everybody, nice. and uh, you know, because they were uh, they were there for a show that's not like a normal show. Yeah. And uh, they were very cool, good people. Nice, nice. No, you were yeah. just so brilliant. Um, oh. I was like, I was watching you. I'm like, do you ever go blank after you see a cue? Do you ever? Just yes. You watch <laughs> the special I do a couple of times. I'm like, I'm uh, uh, roll the decks, roll the decks. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh. Uh, keep rolling, keep rolling. You know, keep rolling. Just keep rolling. Stall and go, go, go. Shark, shark, shark. Keep moving forward. Something will, something will come along. It won't come along if you stop moving. You got to trust that creative process. It's up the road a ways. No matter what you do, you're not going to find it by staying right here. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. At and, least and it's I, more interesting to see you get, <laughs> you know, <laughs> running. Yes, you see me a couple of times. Like, <laughs> absolutely. And you started in stand-up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a team, two-man team, Overton and Sullivan. Oh, I, I had no idea. So what, did you ever do any, were you were like any group comedy special or any comedy special like back in the day? We never, you know, it was just before the comedy boom. Oh. Just before we broke up, it was from 73 to 78, Overton and Sullivan, you know, it all starts out as you, you were brilliant tonight. No, you were. Uh, so we're just artists, man. We're just here for the art form and to the first paycheck. <laughs> that. That changes then everything. it's a marriage and it's <laughs> whose premise is more important than whose punchline. And mm -hmm. Absolutely. <sighs> and, and you, I heard that you worked with Robin Williams 
and you were friends with him, right? Can you do you have any fun stories or anything? Well, I just have good stories about how good he he was as a person. He Mm -hmm. would stop, you know, like I would uh, be walking around in San Francisco with him. And at yeah. first I was thinking, I got to run defense for this guy if he gets mobbed. You know, I'm big six four, you know, guy. And so uh, and he didn't need any, he didn't need one bit of it because he loved everyone and everyone loved him. The vibe changed on me because he was respectful to everybody. And it doesn't matter how late he was for something else he had to get to. He would stop and do photos with everyone. Aww. And talk to everyone, an extra joke with them, and autograph, and wait around Aww. to meet someone else, and you know, he ne- that that part never went away. I love that. So he it really hung up cares. everything else. Anybody waiting on him, they had to go. He's talking to. Hey, we knew he went to the store, and that means he's stopping and talking to everybody. You know, like Jonathan Winters out in the Montecito area, in the, you know, Santa Barbara area, he would go into places and hold court as a character. And every store in the area would have to just, oh, Jonathan's here, and pause, watch. And he'd be a character for an hour and a half by the clothing rack, trying different hats and jackets on and stuff, you know. That's amazing. And everybody knew, this is history. You don't touch one single bit of this. You remain in reverent silence, if not for anything else but the story. Yes. You were there for a Jonathan riff. Wow. And so, you know, uh, uh, Robin and I, I felt watching him riff, too. Was like, it was like that feeling, you know, reverent riffing. Uh, <laughs> coming from a special place. And then eventually we would play together. And we were doing lots of shows together at the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley, 142 Throckmorton. Great space. And so uh, that was his, uh, I know towards the end of his uh, life, he was loving showing up there all the time because it was just down the street from, you know, Tiburon, where he was. So, yeah. That was, a, wow. those are the good days. And, and that place is still brilliant. If they can, you know, I hope they get back up and running to normal again. Because it, it's one of the great spaces of all time, the Throckmorton. I I didn't know that. That's that's amazing. I'm learning from you right now. Uh, uh, Charlie <laughs> Chaplin worked there. So what? we were standing on wooden planks, this old Victorian-looking oh. thing, a theater that looks like an old Victorian theater. Uh, and uh, with the balcony and all the other stuff, you know, and the side wings. And we, we were uh, standing on the same planks that as a vaudevillian previous to film, Charlie Crazy. Chaplin would be up there doing live performances and stuff like that. So that is insane. Know. Oh my gosh. The energy comedy there. history. Yes. yes. Yes, exactly. I can't even imagine. Wow. Mort Saul, he would energize and do these incredible shows. So wise, so brilliant and, and, and insightful. And that part never went away. Age did not cut into that. Yeah. It limited his speed at which he bounded onto the stage. But not up here. Just like with Jonathan, not up here. He was he was like right there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. As long as this is working, is we're good. Right? Uh, right. Well, I would say, up. yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's that's it is an integral part. Absolutely. Yes, it's the captain of the ship. You would think, right? Don't want the thing to yes. so flopping around on its own. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well put. <laughs> so, so uh, what, what prepared Yeah, Robin, was- Robin uh, was at first a little hesitant to do set list, but I talked him into it. Uh, he was hesitant? Yes, and it's because of his reputation. But he's known for improv. But what if it goes poorly? Because he's been in acting oh. for a while. He's been a little rusty for a while. Oh. Uh, you know, what if I go to the thing that was supposed to be custom tailor made for me, and I don't do as well? And it's like that's the one thing that was my thing. And it's and, and it's but I've been away from it because I'm on camera. I'm doing other stuff, right? Yes. And so I said. This is the bicycle ride of all time, man. You're never going to be anything but brilliant at this. 
a fish doesn't have to remember how to swim and you throw them back in the water. Yeah. Facts. Yes. Uh, and so he, he instantly owned it, crushed it. Of course. Yeah. I took the crown immediately. So yeah. yeah. Do you remember your first set list? Ah, uh, that would have been a while. We were talking years and years ago, you know, yeah. 12, maybe more years. And uh, I remember, yeah, you know, having fun, doing fun things with it. And that's when no one had seen it before. And some of the people in the audience are going, oh, wait a minute, don't you rehearse all this? Is that, what's going on here? They, they couldn't believe something like that was going on. And so the other people, they're going, well, that was interesting and good, you know, but they weren't following along. It took a while to get... Like, I wonder how the first jazz group was received live. Was it the first show that killed or was it like the third show that killed? Right. And it took a level of cultural acclimation. Mm hmm. That's there to you then go. start to piece it together. You know, it's like the, the, the second hardest job in the world is being the first abstract painter because no one knows what the hell you're doing. <laughs> and the first hardest job is being the second abstract painter because then everyone compares you to the first one. Right. And then after the third, fourth, fifth one, then everything starts, oh, it's a style. It isn't just you stole from one guy. This is a thing now. And once they get that it's a thing, they can form a fan group around the thing, like jazz mm -hmm. or anything, punk, rock, comedy. It's a, it's a thing. Absolutely. The, and you get a fan base for the thing. And so I, I think that's the etymology. That's how you get there. Yes. We are going to start uh, taking some questions from the audience. Uh, Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, Rick, please give us one of your favorite Dennis Miller live stories. Show off your Emmy if you so desire. <laughs> oh, Emmy. Well, it looks just like an Emmy. You know what it looks like. But uh, it was, uh, I'll just tell you, it's, we had, that team had to work under a very unique and interesting set of conditions. And here they are. We're Friday night live, not Monday night live. So the entire news cycle had been picked apart like piranhas by every other late night show, completely stripped down to a skeleton of mm. whatever is left because all the meat was grabbed by Jay and by David and by, you know, uh, mm. back then it would be, they were the, you know, the rivals. Yeah. And, um, but it was enough that at, by Friday you had to know everyone else's stick so you didn't steal it. And because your reputation is you do something that no one's seeing, otherwise it'll that will catch you. That'll get you. If Absolutely. you think you can get away oh, with yeah. right. Oh, they're coming, they're coming for me. They're coming. No, they're coming for me. <laughs> so oh, they're coming name. for you. All right, that's it. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, La it. Ladies did. first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so these guys, that's why they developed a style we all kind of had to find that other way to get into these topics that have been so mm -hmm. clobbered earlier in the week and photographs and other things. And that's where kind of like the rant formed where it's about more about long form connected ideas, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, whereas there weren't so much hilarious stories from the office with all these hilarious, that's so often, Stories about funny people, they're not funny all the time. They're right. often very, you know, they have a thing about life. They're kind of insightful in some ways. Absolutely. You hang out with serious people, you're going to get some funny damn stories. <laughs> the more serious <laughs> people take themselves, the stories get way funnier instantly. That it's that opposites, you know, they're doing the opposites. Yes. Um, Do you yeah, so... I thought the team was really some of the most inventive people I'd ever met in my mm -hmm. life. But the fact that they could get around all that other stuff being taken and devoured already and find a one last way to get in. So the brain had that added thing as a writer, you know? Yes, absolutely. Well, you want, you want a little feedback here? We have, I'm really enjoying Ty Nate, by the way, 
Uh, I'm really enjoying this interview. Thank you for brightening my weekend, Mr. Overton. Oh, it's my, it's my honor and pleasure. Thank you. So they're, they're loving you. That's I great. That. I want it to be educational. I'd like it to help. Yes. Yes. And Thank you're you. very intelligent. You're very smart. I love that. Um, do you think a lot? Do you overthink sometimes? Do you? Are you one of those? Uh, well, it's, I guess it depends who you ask. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'm uh, overthinking. You know, it, it took an overthinker to get Apollo 13 back. <laughs> <laughs> and I think in some ways it's like some people that you might call OCD. Yeah. Or on the spectrum or whatever all these yeah. phrases are that it the only reason those astronauts got back with a giant blown out panel on the side of their ship is due to autistic OCD people yeah, who have eschewed lots of social stuff in their hard drive to just make space for math problems like these. Mm -hmm. They are like dedicated Ram individuals. And if you find them and you can get them in just the right place, they are the ones with the cape who save the day every time. Absolutely. I agree. They gave up a lot to have that Ram space freed up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, you know, a movie set, button down here, button here but after lunch, right? Yes. Wine glass here, wine glass there, continuity. Yes. Continuity at the a brain. And I'm, saying, I'm not saying they're all OCD or on the spectrum, but they have a set of gifts that is dedicated RAM to that, you know? They have Absolutely. to have a brain that hyper-focuses on these things. And you got to kick out some memories or some other crap to make room for it. Yes, that is true. Yes. Yeah. It should be admired because those are sacrifices. Yes. A hundred percent. Are you ready for another ego boost? <laughs> oh, oh, watch out. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to screw it in real good there. All right. Well, here's Gary. Hi, Gary. I love Gary. I love all of you guys. Um, Rick is fascinating. Thank you, Rick Overton. Keep being you. I'm going to thank you very much. You keep being you too. And if we stay <laughs> us, they can't get us. It's only when you stop being you, they get you. So good for you. Thank you. Yeah. But now let's not get it mixed up and be each other. Cause you know, we don't know all the passwords. Exactly. Right. So I heard, I read actually that you were on the tonight show when Joan Rivers was the guest host. Yes. So I wanted to ask you, how was that experience? Well, do you remember the big uh, conflagration that happened between Joan and Johnny when Johnny learned that she had a deal to do a, a late night show that would cut one half, or into, half hour into uh, Tonight Show time? Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, that was all in the trades, a big blow up of Johnny and all that. Well, I was on her last show. So that was there the, the night of the blow up. <laughs> Not too uh, awkward. Have a good set. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, but there was a lot of tension. It was, oh my God, Freddie was furious. Freddie the Cordova was furious. And, uh, and so I got, <laughs> I'm, I'm associated with Joan. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Thank no. you, Joan. I love you, Joan. You're my hero. You really. She had brass ovaries. She truly did. She, 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 she was, was amazing. A, she was a downtown scrapper, and she took no shit, no measure of it. And she was I love that. brilliant and uh, cuttingly hilarious. Very, very funny. Just one of my faves, for sure. Yeah. Brave. Very, yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very. Uh, so here, Jennifer is asking, what shows have you been in? Uh, so I know you've been in shows and movies, obviously. You've been on the, off on the Office, on Seinfeld, and Mrs. Doubtfire. So do you have any juicy stories, any tea you can spill? Well, uh, with Mrs. Doubtfire, um, I walked right past him <laughs> at the uh, craft service no. on my first day. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't 
no. And then wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know in the script. I know in the script. Oh, that's good. That's really good with the whole body suit and everything. Oh, wow. Very impressed. I was blown away in the first part of just walking in there. Yeah. You know, to be around great prosthetics is on film is one thing. To walk past it in real life, yeah, it's okay. It's another. I see you at lunch. You know, I see you feeding food to your nose because you're the monster, whatever. <laughs> but I think, you know, like, it's one thing to make an alien or a monster or a zombie because we've never really seen one of those. Yeah. But to make a person. Crazy. Just like little big man with Dustin Hoffman, that makeup job that, oh, my God, he would be right next to you and you wouldn't know. That's insane. Oh, man, that's, that's it. I think that's the height of the, the form. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. That movie is so funny. He was, and we would do improvs. I think in the extended DVD, you would see there were some improvs of him running back and forth and tipping me to not notice that his makeup is falling off and he's, <laughs> and he's so shit face drunk, right? You know, he keeps having shots with the, uh, with the boss of the network and, you know, so, so there was an added scene that we had loads of fun with. That's it. But I was just, shoot, that's my little thing. It was wonderful for him to give me this gig. A lot of guys could have done the part. It's just one of those utility things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very nice of them to give it to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just, you know, try to do a good job, have a little fun with it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people that are listening um, are actors or want to be actors. So what advice do you have for people who want to get in the industry or who want to advance as an actor? I'm going to say one word. You say it for me. You know the word. One word. Study what? Go. You know it, Grace. One word. Study what? Acting. The other one. Study your lines. What? Your... Improv. Study improv. Oh, yes. Improv. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You have to study improv. Right. Yes. And I also study acting, also study cold reading. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I would say improv gets you a level of comfort in your skin yeah. In any setting that reads as confidence on set to people. And now I could say that a large portion of my IMDB contains some modicum of, of improv I've done somewhere because they finally you get to that place where mm -hmm. they kind of know your reputation that you when you play, it's good. It's funny. And it's worth letting a little bit of, especially now that it's not an expensive reel of film. It's just a little saltine, you know. Mm -hmm. The digital saltine will hold hours of, of you just goofing around. And they can yes. pick and choose later on a Mac laptop, you know. <clears throat> so a whole different scene from before. That's but, right. you know, I'd say one of, uh, I, for me at least, to get just a tiny shred of the latitude that someone like Fred Willard would get to roll and play mm -hmm. while they're shooting. And that not everyone knows what's going to happen next. They just know it'll be good. And yeah. they will hopefully have an embarrassment of riches they can edit from later. And so you want that reputation. And the way to get it is to start doing this stuff now until your comfort level in your skin is so at ease that you make them feel very confident in you while you're doing it. Yeah, they read when you're not sure you got this show, show, whatever it is, you know, they can sense it. Yes. And so you want to eliminate that because improv in in the duration and it won't take that long. You'll either stay in or you weren't going to do it. It's not yeah. for you. Absolutely. But if you're going to do it, I'm telling you, it changes your game afterwards. It does. Everywhere. They love you before you started reading when you walked into the room. Yes, I agree. And it just makes you feel comfortable taking risks. I know it helped me with that. I, I don't give a, you know, I don't give a shit. It's like, I'll do whatever. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's okay. I do it when, yeah. with stand up. I love doing improv and, and like working with the audience and doing crowd work. It's so fun. And I don't care. And I don't even think about it. And 
when I'm not thinking is when I come up with stuff that I'm like, wow, <laughs> how, you know, it's, it's when you're in that zone, taking right. risks and not caring. I am one of those guys that like, I was raised on one of the, the, the earlier improv days when people were just amazed that they weren't so adjusted to improv like they are now with who's line and everything like that. They, oh yeah, improv. Okay. I've seen like, they didn't see it yet. What is this? What are they right. doing? They, people magic. can do that. Yeah. It's magic. It was, they were watching like magic. Right. Yeah. And absolutely. so that sense is kind of gone, but part of that is because now it's a quick game. Zingity bing. I'm sharper than you. And da, 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 top, mm -hmm. top, 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 top. It was more like character development, you know, right. in the days when Alan Arkin was in Second City or the Compass Players and there's slowly a scene would build and it was training the audience to just, where is this scene going? It was cinematic in a way. And it was theatrical, you know, it was like a, it was, yes. you could have moments of drama. And what all the, those people were doing was formatting themselves to have that grace to take it everywhere else. And that's why they all went into film. And not right. everybody that zingity bings it since then. They don't all make it to film because it doesn't translate on the camera. That's right. Yes. Uh, the character doesn't have that long step duration. That's interesting. I never thought about that, but you're right. Now it's more about like competing and just funny, just being funny. And before it was more of of a scene, a real scene that can have both elements, drama and comedy. Yeah. And don't you think that's the richest? That's, uh, that's the good it stuff. It is a hundred percent. Yes. And as a casting agent, you would gravitate probably more towards that. It looks more like what you already use and do. Yes. I agree. So I recommend everybody to think in terms of make, make some of that. It's good for you. Learn yes. to like it like broccoli. <laughs> Yeah, improv is not my thing, but I know that doing it and pushing myself to do it has made me a better stand-up, better actress, better writer. Okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. So you here, can't avoid it. No, no. I mean, I always try to take a class every now and then, or just mm -hmm. join an improv group, even though I, again, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it's just so useful. It's the best. Isn't that what we're doing right now? Yeah, we're improvising this. I have no yeah, idea. Hang on. Wait a minute. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry. Did I jump your line there? I'm sorry. Let me go back again. <laughs> Do you say that line? Oh. I know. That's so boring. Exactly. It's like, just go with it. <laughs> you messed up. Just go with it. Um, go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so here is Howard. Hi, Howard. Uh, the boarded, I can't, I can't, a uh, bonded. Bonded warehouse scene in Beverly Hills oh, yeah. was outstanding. Outstanding. Well, Did it take long to shoot the scene with Eddie? No. It took a regular shoot night. You know, we got there and shot all night. Went home into the daylight, you know, because they got the they got to use that warehouse during the day. Yes. So, so you we get it when everything's all slow and you know, trucks aren't going back and forth because it's only want their truck going back and forth. And uh, so you're doing a night shoot. And we got there, and Eddie uh, and I, we knew each other from when he was in the identical triplets. Yes. Comedy, you know about this, the comedy trio he was in back in Long Island. And uh, and I was in Overton and Sullivan, so we knew each other. And nice. uh, he, he helped get me that part. It's another one of those things where a friend got you the part. This is, nice. They got my guy, you know, he's a, uh, the, the warehouse uh, supervisor, just there's some dork who doesn't know what he's doing, you know, and just likes when things are easy. And, uh, he could have given that part to a lot of people. He gave it to me, and we had a little fun. And I got to improvise a little bit. I gave him a line uh, about, well, I'm going to look so far up your ass. They're going to, IRS is going to look up your ass. With those. Uh, he said, I said, with one of those iron microscopes, the kind from science class. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he used it. And so, you know, that was, I was getting a little bit, I don't want to say spoiled, but... Uh, it's not always, don't always think you can do it. Yeah. Because of a few lucky breaks that you get to improvise. And don't bring that to every set. They don't like it on every set. They can make That's as much trouble as it ever. And, uh, you know, Robin talked about that too. And I, 
Mm -hmm. I, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I see. There were places where it would work. Young Doctors in Love, you get to play them. You know, I did the, the helium voice and all that. <laughs> and, uh, oh my, it's so weird. Now my helium voice is way down here. <laughs> Wow, that's impressive. Up there like this. Now it's down here. It's the old helium voice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The Eastwood effect, you know? Yeah. That's <sighs> great. Uh, so going back to the acting for the advice you had to do improv, Gary's asking if you recommend the Groundlings. They're a great group. And they yes, certainly, yeah. you can count the roster of stars. Yes. Who have come out of that group they are yes. great you know what it is it's, it might be them it might be someone else it might be uh second city or it might be mm -hmm. uh ucb or you know upright citizens okay uh you might find a private teacher with a small group but it's whoever talks to you exactly don't look to fit the uniformity of another group yeah look to I see which one hits you right you know oh my god is oh this is great it yeah. shouldn't have to do with their prestige or their size. It's like dating. Whoever you connect with, someone might look good on paper and then you don't connect and somebody doesn't look good on paper and you just have a blast. Yeah. So books, and you never know. Judging books by their covers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The Groundlings, I feel, because I did all of them, uh, it's more character oriented. Like yes. they really focus on character development. And I really like that about them. Sure. And they have some brilliant shows. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Hilarious. All-time memorably hilarious. Incredible. Like history, hilarious. history of laughter kind of shows, you know. Yes. And so, uh, yeah. You. Uh, okay. We have want to get out. I want to teach a course on. I, yeah. I don't know if anybody's teaching this course on improvising on lens, on camera mockumentary style oh, and i don't know i've never seen a course about that but i would like, i'd like to teach a course like that about what your agenda is and uh where you're coming from you know as a character and that it's not it's kind of the opposite of zing being clever improv although yeah. it is very very smart and clever it uh, it's to play someone who is not necessarily that in the character yeah to do the uh, there's there is the Fred Willard genius level brilliant version of that character and that's like some of the pinnacle work right there or any of the people in the Christopher Guest films they're all they all put out their variation of that kind of work yes that level that kind of work absolutely what what is the difference between improvising on camera and improvising on a stage uh fourth wall firmly in place mm -hmm. and um it, depending on because it could be a mike lee film it doesn't have to be a christopher guest film there are other yeah. films with improv i've been in a, i've never been in a christopher guest film but i've been in mockumentaries and um i'm currently on the in the one on amazon called izzy lion it's oh, nice. following following i just got a fun little quick visit in there you know and be be with my buddies for a quick shoot there and uh but it's funny and it's once again an opportunity to see that it's like you got to be serious mm -hmm. and you have to not be conscious of how clever and winkety dink you are absolutely you stay with it and i don't think you have room for a second agenda like so many mm -hmm. things it's like yeah but what's the actor really thinking what's his, what's his animal what's a second you don't have any of that you uh -oh. kind of it's i won't say it's simplistic but it is pretty linear you plow ahead with what you say and what you say is what you mean that's right there aren't a lot of liars in mockumentary there can be if you're improvising in a more play format and people do that too but usually by the time they're shooting you did improvise but now we got it we recorded it it's been now you're going out of a book of the thing you improvised earlier mm-hmm Rarely is it, and everybody go cold and roll. Yeah. To shoot a scene, though there are examples of it. But most of the time, someone wants to know what's going on. Of course. Even in, uh, like when uh, Curb. When Curb. Oh my gosh. Ex look, here Gary's asking 
Can you tell us about improv on Curb? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't give actors lines. Thank you, Gary. The great question. Yeah, but he says you got to get from uh, A to B to C in mm -hmm. a certain amount of time, or just the cut's not going to make it. Right. You got to think in terms of little compact. You know how they cut on the show. Think mm -hmm. of who you are in the episode. You know, and you're, th you're this size. Uh, how long a clip do you think you get? It's not. It, don't let your ego tell you this. Well, what do you think it is? So make it to that point. And, and if it's a compact, lovely little moment, there's every chance you made it in. Yeah. He has to go through an embarrassment of riches through all of this stuff. He has to go through lots of great takes. They don't all make it in because it's just the wrong size. It's not steering the story, which he is very aware of. And you have to sort of know who you are in the scene. We, we can't just, those things can't be made up. Uh, you have to know your, your basic set of emotions. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's how in this amount of time you find your words to get that part done. Yeah. Try to do it smartly and don't right. stomp on everybody else. You yeah. know, and sometimes the tiniest little thing, when I did the uh, GE commercial with you can't pick up the hammer, my son can't, you know, pick up the hammer. So uh, I was doing gigantic takes of it. Son, he, he won't pick up the hammer. I don't get this kid. No, 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 no. Take it down. Hey, I don't get it. No, no, no. Way, way down. Just say pick up the hammer. Pick up the hammer. Down. Take it down. Really? Is that funny? Is anyone? Trust me, it's funny. So the other. Pick up the hammer. Pick it up. And it, that was the take they used. Wow. On camera. That's because that's on camera. And it's like you got to remind yourself that's now that might not work on stage. Absolutely. Yeah. But when it's all big screen and you're on the screen and your face does it, this doesn't work. It's too much. It's Godzilla. Yeah. Because the camera captures the intention. But when you're at a distance in a theater, it doesn't capture that. Mm. So you have to overexpress it. And so a lot of improv on camera can sort of, not all of it lives exactly in that world, but there's a reminder of the difference between the dynamic on the stage and dynamic with the camera. Absolutely. I love that. We have more questions. Um, Howard, uh, he's asking one more question for Rick. When you were writing for the Dennis Miller show, who came up with using big vocabulary? You or Dennis, full disclosure, I looked up big vocabulary. <laughs> that was uh that was dennis what is the big vocabulary i have no idea and what I, is just, I think that's just his big vocabulary i didn't know something else i mean it was a, he had a style of he has a style of okay using uh a lot of literary comparative references got it along with the formula of big world event and small social event which okay. is a great big and small Laurel and Hardy yeah, almost contract. never fail writing formula. Yeah. So like one of the jokes, uh, what are we on language here? What happens with like, if I use four letter words here, what happens? Oh, you can do it. All right. So I wrote a joke for him. Uh, I, uh, the joke goes like this. He loved the comparison kind of style, right? Something is like something else. So I said, the educational system in America is like, is this uh, more fucked up than Peter O'Toole on his birthday? And uh, yeah, so. Yeah. That's um, good. So that was like, I was trying to think, you think in Dennis terms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And okay. Uh, Kevin Rooney was the guy who helped Dennis start off with the rants and things like that. Yes. Kevin is no longer with us now. He just left oh. us recently. So I'm very sorry to oh. say. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Wow. He was a genius writer. Mm. Mm -mm. What is going on? Every It's like, I, are we getting older? Is that why people are like, I, so many people are like comedians are just leaving us. What's going on? Well, I guess there's different theories about that. Like, really? Tell me your theories. <laughs> what are the theories? I guess time will play it, tell out whether it was the vaccine 
or whether it was something else, you know. And the, oh. so I've read, I've read reports about all of that, but I have my own personal story. Well, the long COVID, I have guy friends that had heart issues because of that and they were perfectly healthy and it wasn't i don't think it was the vaccine the doctors say it's like long COVID that can bring you problems i mean maybe it is the vaccine i don't know who knows can really a little drop do that much i don't know we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> moving on this is someone who went through chemotherapy. So to me, a low drop of something they inject in you. You know, I had like tons and gallons of stuff put in my bloodstream. So I don't know. I'm I was... glad. I'm glad you're good. You look great. Thank you. Yeah, I survived it. No more than that. You are. You're looking good. Good Thank for you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That's you. Yeah. That's more than survived. Yes, yes. I went through it with a smile on my face and crying and sometimes when I looked at myself in the mirror balls. Yes. yes it's, <laughs> oh, well, but that was to uh that was to all change too. So, oh yeah, yeah. It's and my hair is yeah. growing. Yes. Grew back and uh yeah. Yes. Look at you yeah, and look at me. <laughs> you know, I didn't know about the I loved being bald, by the way. But the only thing I didn't know is that at night it gets really cold. I had to wear beanies. Yeah. I it'll really after a while it'll adjust it's like oh, it does? i have a, a burly beard and it's winter time okay. and i shave it and i hit the outside the skin goes whoa but it doesn't keep doing that it eventually goes i can't keep going well i all just right. don't have it in me i can't go <laughs> whoa all day i'm just gonna have to let it let it roll you know and the whole body has that feature we do it with chronic pain that's same funny so it adjusts. it's the same machine yeah. <laughs> it just that's funny. I didn't know that. All I know is uh, like at night I would, my my head would freeze. It yes. was just yeah. It you have a shower fun. cap. My mom always wore that that cap in the bathing, you know, bathing cap with the flat yeah. rubber flowers on it and all that from the fifties, you know. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. So and now we're gonna ask you some personal questions. We're gonna get into that. Um do you have any regrets? Sure, of course. You know, I wish I uh, could have had more one-hour specials and all of that, you know, and do that. You know, because I think the thing about doing set list yeah. is I don't need to work a year on the material. That's true. Yes. You can set one of these every week, and I can get 10 specials in a row in 10 weeks. <laughs> and funny as hell. Well, hopefully, you know, and it's with the, <clears throat> as long as you get the suggestions going and that, that, that yeah. part is thought out per week. So it's the same, you know, challenge to the comedian. Absolutely. That would be, a, uh, you know, that I didn't maybe travel and tour more certain areas mm -hmm. of the world. Oh and, yeah. Uh, totally. You know, I, and I let the stand up slip a little. You know, with really? getting into acting because there's, there's just that amount of time, and I was working on mm -hmm. focusing on the acting part more than the going out every night. It was like, oh, yeah, the going out every night after a certain age, you know, uh, it's exhausting. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 and also traveling, being on oh. the road. I don't miss that. <laughs> traveling ain't fun anymore. No, and if you don't have that road thing going, um, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for lots of things, but uh, in pertaining to the kinds of things we're talking about. Yes. I think what I have is a set of abilities that lots of people have, but I'm lucky that I found out. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's luck. That so if I could luck. spread that luck is why don't you try to see if you got it too. If you're wrong, so what? Exactly. What did Very you really spend true. to find out? Nothing. Nothing. That's true. Compared to what you get back for a lifetime? Yeah, there's no comparison. It doesn't even feel like work. No, I shouldn't. You know, and if it does at times, not all work is bad. I mean, no. as actors, all we talk about is we want work. Yes. A hundred percent. 
Yeah. Before I continue with the personal questions, uh, here Nate has a question for you. Uh, what was it like working on ground uh, Groundhog Day? Oh, you know Harold Ramis, Second City Improv Man. Again, we were improvising a lot. Rick Dukeman and me, you know, and then Bill. Uh, Rick Dukeman was the other guy in the bowling alley with me, and uh, we we were. By the time you saw the scene, it was kind of that thing we got it down. But we improvised. I came up with all my own physical shtick to do, sliding around on the ice and showing that I had to, I added, the, I have to throw up thing the whole time. And they liked that as a little added, uh-oh, the whole time. And yeah. uh, Bill Murray whispered, ask to see if this flapjacks. And that's all brand new. Flapjacks was him whispering in my ear to say it. So we just went from there. Oh, wow. That was a lot of fun. And uh, it was amazing to watch him in the diner when he can, he knows he can eat whatever he wants and it doesn't matter the next day. Yeah. And he's telling, telling Andy McDowell about how, you know, he's questioning everything in life and nothing matters. And he would eat this entire pound cake and they had a little tray of go oh, and cut. Boy, I get it out. But oh, there were points God. when he was just eating it because he had to swallow it for the take. And he did like so many takes. No one could believe he could. Like, how are you? What are you doing? It's like a uh, cool hand Luke with the eggs. How did you do it? You know, very impressive. But yes, definitely very impressive. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, any favorite quotes that you have, and what does it mean to you? Any favorite quote? Just one, not quotes. Let's just put one. Uh, well, for people going through tough times, I like the Churchill quote. When you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yes. Don't settle down in hell. <laughs> mm -mm, just keep the, yeah. the goal. Keep going, you know? baby. And that, again, oh, is well. improv. That's right. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to go no and in hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is hell and improv for sure. I love yeah. that. Thank you for that. You uh, and my last question, I always ask my guests. What do you want to be known for? I think improv would be a good one. Improv, okay. You know, that I was an improvangelist, that I helped. So. <laughs> That's great. I love that. That all that good. But uh, that I, uh, you know, and that I'm an imperfectionist. Imperfectionist? <laughs> I'm an imperfectionist. It's the opposite of how we get so screwed in the head every other way, you know. Yeah, uh, and imperfection, and that's also it's a goal you can reach every day. Yeah, embrace your imperfections. Yeah, because that's yeah. what's good about improv. It was a surprise. Perfection has to be compared with something previous. That is true. I love that. I love that. Um, here we have some good feedback. Uh, thank you for making my weekend. Um, yeah, that's so sweet. Thank you, Nate. I was Thanks. having a bad weekend, but your stories oh, and sorry. jokes put a smile on my face. Oh, that's great to hear. I wish you lots of luck. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Oh, and and Jose says I'll attend that church <laughs> because you're oh, like uh, how, Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. Bring the jet around. Bring the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and here, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Love you both and hugs. Oh, oh thank you. I love you too, Likewise. sister. Thank oh, you so much. You. Well, this nice. was so much fun. Thank you so much Likewise. for joining me on Love at First Laugh. Uh, it was I, a wonderful opportunity to get to talk and get caught up. Now, one last second. What's going on with you? <laughs> I'm alive. I'm turning That's it around on you. I'm turning it around. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm happy that I'm alive and I'm grateful for every minute I get to spend on this planet. How, well, how do? what do you mean? Where's your movie credit? You can't <laughs> just be happy on planet Earth. You're not allowed. Uh, yeah, you right. have to have some, some superficial credit instead. No, it's, <laughs> how dare you have just plain happiness? It's it's a sin. I know. I know. I'm going to hell. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, that's good. That's a very zen good place to be. And uh, everyone yes. should learn from you how to do it. Oh, thank you. Well, cancer taught me how to do it. So that was that was my teacher. Who? 
Cancer. Oh, cancer. I had cancer. Yes. Yes. I didn't hear what you said. So cancer was the teacher oh, yes. for this. It was, it was my teacher. I learned how to appreciate everything. It just changed my whole point of view. Just facing your own mortality, possibility of dying, just completely changes everything. Have you ever reflected on the perfection of your name? Grace. Ooh. I like that. Seems plain to me. Oh, thank you. That is very sweet. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. This is great. I had a lot of fun. Yes, this was super fun. And guys, you have to watch Set List on Amazon. Please do it. It's hilarious. You're going to be blown away. Okay? <laughs> thank you. So thank watch you. it on <laughs> Amazon Prime. Yes. And follow Rick Thanks. on all the socials. Definitely. Easy, easy to find them. All right, you guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you, all of you, for your questions and your beautiful comments. I love you guys. I love you, Rick. You're amazing. Back, Grace. Right back thank at you. you. Thank you. You're amazing. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you again.